Hey wonderful people and welcome back. This is a response video about UFOs, the Nimitz, and Chris Leto. Chris is a genuinely interesting person with military experience. And he's posted this video, which is called Flying Saucers and Tic Tacs at the Nimitz Engagement. It's interesting stuff. Well, actually, it's pretty standard stuff that we've all gone over since 2004, since the Navy released these UAP pictures. But in this video, Chris Leto uses clips from a Jeremy Corbyn interview with a Princeton radar operator he just calls Trevor. And it's very interesting. Listen to what Trevor says about how the objects move. You just start seeing things in that top left corner of the box. Start seeing things blip in and out. You just see something chilling there for a little bit, and then boom, it's gone. And then it's over here in a different area of that corner. It's like flashing. It's solid, then it's gone, then it moves to the left or the right. So it keeps doing that. Like it's moving around. It's you know, there's activity going on. They're all over the place. He can't even tag them. They appear there, there, there. They seem to fly around at incredible speeds. And then Chris Leto goes into this long and very good description based on some good scientific evidence of how fast, how many Gs would these objects have pulled? A G being one gravity, so human body can stand about 10 before we black out. And he said that the Princeton radar operator saw these objects descending from flight level 28, 28,000 feet, right down to the deck, maybe even under the sea, in a fraction of a second. And working that out, it would mean, as he clearly shows on this graph, a g-force of over five thousand g's periodically the uaps would drop down from twenty-eight thousand feet to sea level estimated to be 50 feet or under the surface in 0.78 seconds so that is amazingly fast that's what trevor's talking about how many g's does that actually take if we scroll down here a lot okay upwards so five thousand g's five thousand g's is basically just the center of this curve of this uh probability curve and that low end is, you know, 3,000 Gs, which is unbelievable, okay? Unbelievable numbers. Normal G-forces are 9 Gs for any plane that could, they could possibly take. Uh, humans can only take 9 Gs. Planes rip apart at 15 Gs. Well, nothing that we know of can stand that amount of G-force. Certainly no organic matter. I mean, it can't be piloted. And even flight structures aluminium or even aluminum, titanium, anything, carbon fiber, it couldn't stand a 5,000 G acceleration. It would just disintegrate. So Chris Leto and others are drawing the conclusion from this data that these objects are exotic extraterrestrial craft. But hang on, there is one technology that exists today and probably existed in 2004, way above my pay grade to know, that can do exactly what Trevor on the Princeton saw and what Chris Leto describes, 5,000 Gs, in fact, even more. Let me explain. Who's ever played with a laser pointer and a cat? <laughs> Lasers are fascinating, been around for quite a while. They're a collimated beam of energy. And when you wave one around to draw a spot on your PowerPoint presentation or to confuse the cat, you're shining this beam of energy that only appears as a spot when it hits an object. You can't really see lasers in midair. Well, you kind of can with smoke, but most of the time in normal atmosphere, the laser beam is invisible until it hits an object, right? And what do we all enjoy doing with laser pointers and that cat? And that is 
shining it around and moving it fast so the cat chases the red or green dot. You can shine it up on the ceiling and then drop it down to the deck and chase around the room. You can turn it off, turn it back on again somewhere else, and the hapless cat will chase the dot. And that dot that the cat thinks is a real object breaks the laws of physics if it was a solid object. You can move it maybe even faster than a 5000 G force. Whoop! Because there is no physicality to the dot. But yes, you in the back are all shouting, but they didn't see a cat and a laser pointer, Professor. They saw a 3D object, a Tic Tac, or other strangely shaped craft. Well, I'm going to tell you today, and to remind Chris Leto, that there is a technology out there that can break the laws of physics, appear real, move at over 5,000 G, disappear, reappear, confuse radar operators, and look like a flying saucer. And I'm actually quite surprised that Chris Leto, who's obviously a US military person who's flown aircraft, doesn't tell you about a type of technology that's around in 2022 that can actually make a flying saucer appear in the air. But maybe we just all want to believe in flying saucers and aliens and not look at what could exist to do the effects that undoubtedly the Nimitz pilots and radar operators saw that day. And I think there's an explanation. And right now, Millions of dollars, millions of euros, millions of pounds, millions of other currencies are being spent on that very technology, and it's called LIP. LIP is laser-induced plasma. Let me explain again how that works. But first of all, any of you who are under 20 probably have forgotten or have never learned how this system used to work. This is a CRT, cathode ray tube television. It works with a single dot, which flies around drawing lines very fast on your screen. It makes a phosphor glow, sometimes bright, sometimes less bright. And by making lots of lines in America 525, in Europe 625 and other systems, and then getting to the bottom, flying up to the top again, and drawing this TV picture, you can produce an image. And it was all based on us, on human physiology. We humans are actually quite bad at seeing things that move very fast. Who's ever seen a fly or a bee go bzz, past you? You don't see a clear little bee moving. You see a blur, a gray line. And that's because we have a maximum brain processing speed of about 24 images per second. And you've probably heard that 24 FPS number mentioned somewhere else. That's how movies used to work. Films work by persistence of vision. The human brain joins the dots. When something is moving and you take multiple individual still pictures of it and then project it back fast enough, we think we're seeing a real object move. But how many frames per second or how fast does the TV have to do it? Well, experiments were done in the early days of cinema, and the magic number of 24 frames per second became a standard good enough. It's a compromise a bit between a bit faster, it could be a bit smoother, but it uses more film, a bit slower, say down to about 16 frames per second, and an object appears jumpy. 
But interestingly, that's all gone today. And now we don't have interlaced TV. We have progressive scans where the whole image is shown and only the bit that moves, moves using the pixels or whatever they have on modern screens. <laughs> so that was a bit of a history lesson, but it still works. Imagine if you could draw a dot in the sky like a TV raster and move it around and produce a holographic image of a craft like the dot of a laser pointer and then you could move the laser pointer down to the sea or up in the air or 100 miles to the left or the right. You would break the laws of physics but hang on, lasers don't work like that. If you tried that, just shone a laser up into the sky, it doesn't reflect off anything. I mean, it might hit a cloud, but most of the time it wouldn't. The one technology that we all want that doesn't really exist is a lightsaber. I really want my lightsaber. A culminated laser beam that stops there and you can move it. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Well, today you can. Lightsabers physically exist. We can now stop a laser at a point in midair and produce a spot. Laser-induced plasma. This is how it works. If you get multiple laser beams, usually not in the optical wavelength. I mean, laser pointers are red because they show up on a whiteboard, but you can make laser light out of ultraviolet, infrared, or even masers, microwave amplification. They don't have to be in our visual spectrum to be a laser. There's lots of lasers you can't see out there. So imagine you've got four lasers and you can focus them to a point where all the beams cross, bon donc. Burdonk. And you put enough energy into those laser beams that where they cross at their focal point, they turn the atoms in our atmosphere. And this would only work in our Earth's atmosphere. It probably wouldn't work in space. Interesting point. It ionizes, it strips the atmosphere down into ions, the fourth state of matter. A glowing ball of plasma. You got it? You've made a dot which can stop somewhere in space and you can move it. Not on the ceiling, not on the floor, but, but somewhere in your room, in the air, you've now got a dot of plasma which you can move around. That exists today and has existed for a long time. Now let's just apply old-fashioned TV technology to it. Let's move the spot and draw a picture. But not only can you move it in a two-dimensional plane, you can move that dot in three dimensions, a little further back, a little further forward, to the left, to the right, and you could draw a perfect sphere of glowing dot plasma, which would appear as if it existed because our human eyes would see persistence of vision. It would appear like a real object. Flying saucer, airplane, bird, who cares? You could draw that in the air. And Chris Leto knows that because the air forces of today all have it. If an infrared homing missile is coming towards your aircraft, all you do is switch on the loyal wingman, the holographic plane which mirrors your moves, can move away, or even cleverly, when you move, it moves randomly, appearing like two aircraft. The heat-seeking missile comes up and goes, hologram, real plane, uh, hologram, boof leaving you to fight another day. Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, all build loyal wingman holographic laser-induced plasma, three-dimensional looking loyal wingman aircraft. 
today. The image is usually projected by a pod from the aircraft, but you can imagine it could be projected from the ground or from a satellite or from another aircraft. So Chris, just like playing with a laser pointer and your cat, you can suddenly solve all the riddles that you've raised in your video. It can appear real. It can dot around. It is hard to track on radar. It can go from 28,000 feet down to the sea instantly. Breaking the laws of physics of normal g-forces because all it is is a raster shaped dot drawing an object that isn't really there. So is that what they saw? No. <laughs> it has a number of problems with my theory, but it could be. And that's all I am saying today. Chris, Jeremy Corbell, the radar operator all know about laser-induced plasma. They all know that you can produce ghost ship loyal wingman aircraft. So why can't you produce the Tic Tac in 2004? Pretty easy shape to draw and move it around, confusing the pilots who weren't really told it was a military test? I know nothing. The Navy doesn't share anything with me. I just look at what's possible and I'm looking for other explanations. You now may hate me for saying that it's not an alien UFO. Please don't, because what I want to do is expand the possibilities of what it could be. Now I don't know it's laser-induced plasma, but Laser-induced plasma drawing a tic-tac shape which flies around and confuses the radar and the pilots and appears on forward-looking infrared would work. Whatever it really was, if it was a UFO from the planet Zog, a Russian, a Chinese or an American drone, a bird, or laser-induced plasma is still open for debate. And that's why we find it so fascinating. Because the truth is still out there. Mm -hmm.